a lot of football talk. Where do you want to start for week two? Yeah, we gotta we gotta start with my with my guys out, out in Bmore. They 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 damn near uh, hop skip and jump away from where you at. You know, shout out to Lamar Jackson. Um, especially for fantasy football purposes because he definitely you know held me down this week with the uh, with the bonus from that that hundred yards uh, rushing that he did last night's game. Um, and just you know starting it off with the with the turnovers, bad turnovers. You know, at that the the, the pick six. By the honey badger, um, and then another another interception. You know, I, I was just like, oh, it's gonna be a long night. But um, you know, especially because you know the Ravens, I think got like twelve guys on injured reserve right now, twelve starters. You know what I'm saying? And Ronnie Stanley was maybe the best left tackle. You know, arguably in, in football, he was out. We already know Marcus Peters and the entire running game was out. Um, so just the fact that they showed that heart and kept fighting all the way to the end of that game and we're able to come back and, um, and, and get that win. Um, nothing short of amazing. The defense finally decided to step up, you know, in the fourth quarter when it counted that, that forced fumble on Hilaire um, saved the game for them. And then, you know, big shout out to John Harbaugh for trusting his guy, um, Lamar Jackson and making and, and letting him make the call on whether they wanted to go for it on uh, that fourth and one play. And, you know, they pick up that, that, that first down, and that's all she wrote right there is ain't no, ain't no coming back from that. Yeah, I, I like the, the fourth down call. You had to. Um, you you have been playing from behind all game. You get an opportunity to put the game away. You do it. You don't give Mahomes another shot, especially as you mentioned, after uh, Edwards Hilaire fumbles, you know, when they were already in field goal range. You don't want to give him another shot now to possibly beat you. Uh, but I think that the biggest takeaway from this game is the fact that the Ravens were able to run the ball as effectively as they were against the Chiefs. And that's something that we may have to pay attention to moving forward if this becomes a problem for the Chiefs, because as you mentioned, the Ravens are pretty much down to like their fourth string running back. Latavius Murray wasn't even on his team two weeks ago, and he's the starting running back. And between him and Lamar, they were picking up five and six yards per carry every time they, they ran the ball. And it's, it's really impressive when you consider that they were down 10, 11 points most of the second half, but they were able to still stick with the running game, move the ball down the field. Lamar has some amazing Madden-like throws, one, one jumping in the air and finding a receiver wide open down the field. But ultimately, their ability to run the ball and still be effective against this Chiefs team is, is something, again, that we're going to have to pay attention to because for as dynamic as that offense is, we know the best way to beat them is to keep Patrick Mahomes on the sideline. Yeah. And unfortunately, if you're a Chiefs fan, you got to be a little scared of this because Patrick Mahomes was damn near perfect yesterday. He threw the one pick, but other than that, they were perfect. And you still put up 35 points and lost the game. So something needs to be fixed there. That defense is going to have to get better as the year goes on, because if not, this is going to be the recipe to beat them every week. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, but it, it sucks with that, that interception. I mean, not for me, because, you know, as a Ravens fan. But, yeah, that, that was the, the, the one mistake on, on Patrick Mahomes' behalf, and, and the Ravens were able to, uh, to capitalize on it. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. They're going to have to do something about the, the defense because there's no way that – you know, for the, the guy you just picked up last week and these guys running for 250 something yards on you. I, I understand Lamar Jackson because he's damn near impossible for anybody to, to stop. So I, I'll, I'll even give you that one. But when you're talking about, you know, Tavis Murray, like you said, he was in, in, in New Orleans last season. Um, you know, the, 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 the rookie that they got in there, uh, you know, this is his first team, team year with the team. So yeah. for these guys to come in, you don't have Dobbins. We already know Mark Ingram, you know, he signed with the, with the Texans, so he's not there anymore. Gus Edwards, um, you know, all of these guys are gone, and they were still able to get 200-plus running yards. Because, again, Lamar Jackson only had 107 of those yards. So the running backs, <laughs> you know. Everybody uh, ate. Yeah, yeah. Putting, it, putting in that work. Um, but, you know, they, they have to be concerned about that because when you look at the teams that they're going to have to face, in the playoffs, you know, Tennessee got got Derrick Henry. The Ravens running game has – they've led the league the last two seasons. They're probably going to lead the, the, the league again in rushing yards. You know, um, Najee Harris is starting to come into his own. He had that big uh, play out there in, uh, in uh, Pittsburgh, even though they lost the game. But these – the top teams have really good running games outside of, uh, uh, of maybe the Patriots. Um, but – They've got a lot of they've got very good running backs. So they're gonna have to shore up that defense. 
Um, I don't I don't know if you know if they make a move or something before the trade deadline, but something has to has to 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 to, to shake because uh, Chandler Jones he can't do it by himself. And he was getting Chris Jones. Chris Jones, excuse me. Yeah, he was getting he was getting abused out there on that on you know on that on that line. And ultimately, this is a game that you guys should have won. You know, you picked off you picked off Lamar Jackson twice early. Um, you know, every everything was was going in your favor, and you guys let them come back into this game. And then you know that last drive, and you know, shout out to to, to Mahomes because he was still able to get back down, uh, you know, back down the field. But, you know, the, the Ravens ate up, I think, the first eight minutes of the fourth quarter. And it was pretty much all runs. Yeah, because, I mean, the, the, the turnover happens early in the fourth, so they, they kind of doubled up. They had a possession. They get the, the interception on third down, and then they eat up a lot more of the clock. But the, the Chiefs got a lot of issues. I don't know if they're even going to be in the market to make some sort of move. They're a little cash uh, cash trap. That's why they let go of Sammy Watkins. Um Teron Matthews kind of up for a new contract that they're kind of holding off to next season or, or the off season, I should say, to figure out. So I don't think they can make a move. And to, to be, to be honest, as you mentioned, there are a lot of good running backs in the AFC and the last three times we've seen the chiefs, the most alarming thing is how they've been manhandled. I mean, we know Tampa Bay manhandled them and everybody talks about the pressure they got with their defensive line. But Tampa Bay was able to run the ball pretty effectively on them that whole game, which then put Tom in some, in some favorable third downs and short yardage situations where he was able to pick them apart when they tried to blitz. Opening day, the, the Browns were able to run the ball on them, and the Browns had control of that game. If not for a fumbled snap by the punter, the Browns had a legitimate chance of winning that game in Kansas City. And now you come into Baltimore and you struggle again. So again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound the alarms because it's still early in the season, but we can't ignore what we're seeing the last three times the chiefs have been on the field they have been manhandled by three different opponents who could all run the ball and be more physical than the chiefs so they're gonna have to get their manhood up they're gonna have to figure some things out they're gonna have to put their big boy cleats on because as you mentioned the afc got a lot of physical runners and the way that division is shaking up that division is, is going to be pretty good the raiders are two and oh the broncos are two and oh the chargers look feisty at one and one it looks like it's going to be a really good division in the West, and it looks like it's going to be a good AFC as a whole. Yeah, and, and the Chargers should actually be 2-0 uh, right now. The, the Chargers put up a yeah. bunch of yards and kept shooting themselves in the foot. They had no reason to lose that game to Dallas. Yeah, so that's why, you know, and I and I, I was hoping, because going into this game, I picked the Chiefs to win this game. I just, you know, once, once I saw Staley was out, and I'm just like, this is going to be really tough for them. You know, they, they fought through it. But I thought I, I picked the Chiefs to win this game, but you know, going down 0-2, you don't want to do you don't want to do that. And now at least you know everybody in the division is pretty much one and one for the in in uh, in, in the uh, North. So you know, looking good. But yeah, the Chiefs definitely have to get it together. I still look at them as the favorites to come out of the AFC right now. But you know, if if, if we start seeing more and more of these defensive struggles, you know. I don't know, man. We're gonna you're gonna have to start some something's gonna have to give because they won't they won't win a Super Bowl giving up th th these type of points. There's, there's no way you can you're gonna win a Super Bowl and you're giving up 36 points in a game. They won't even get back to a Super Bowl. And I agree with you. They, they we still got to give them the benefit of the doubt because they have the best quarterback and he has the best weapons. Uh obviously he's got the Pro Bowl receiver, Pro Bowl tight end. Shout out to Travis Kelsey, the fastest tight end to ever get to 8,000 yards as well. That happened yesterday. And also shout out to Julio Jones. He passed Jerry Rice for the fastest to 12,000 yards. Um, but in terms of the Chiefs, they, they're going to have to figure something out. Spagnolo's going to have to get something right with that defense because you can't keep relying on that offense to score 30 plus points for you to win. Mahomes keeps bailing them out of situations. And now I think we're starting to see that it's catching up a little bit. He is not going to be perfect. And as a Colts fan, I know this firsthand because there were a lot of times that Peyton Manning was asked to bail out the Colts when they didn't have an above average defense and they didn't have the running game. And then the moments that he's not perfect, you wonder why your team is going home. You need other guys to step up. And, he, and even with this one, even with, you know, because outside of the interception, you know, he was amazing. He but, was flawless. Yeah. So when the, the offense, you know, you got to remember – it's not just Patrick Mahomes because if you got Hilaire fumbling the football, it doesn't matter how great uh, Patrick Mahomes plays. If you're in the shootout and your running back fumbles the football in a crucial moment, 
I don't care if Patrick Mahomes is, is 25 for 26, 350 yards and three touchdowns. In that moment, you just lost the game because of your because of another play on the offense. And then if you can't count on your defense to to get it to go and get it back, you know, that's gonna be that's gonna be a tough one. Yeah, but I, to me that it, it still comes back to the defense. If you tell any team before the game you're gonna score 35 points, most people would assume we're gonna win the game. 35 points, that's a lot, that's five touchdowns. That's a lot of points that we're putting on the board. Uh 28. Because one of those was Tyrone Matthew, the the return. Right. But yeah, but even, but still, even, but even 28. Even, right. Even still, you would say, look, in a in a in an average NFL game, teams get 12 possessions. If you're scoring on five of those 12 possessions, almost 50% of the time you're scoring a touchdown. I need my defense to get some stops. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Moments. Yeah, I need my defense to get some stops. So the Chiefs got to be better, man. 